I'm stranded on this Indian paradise. This incredible tropical island here. It's got pristine lagoons, super clean warm waters. It's got coral reefs that are totally alive. They're living and it's so beautiful to dive with them. This place is just out of this world. It's called Mini Koi Island. It's the largest island in India's Union Territory called Lakshadweep. And the big difference between Minikoi and the rest of the Lakshadweep Islands, there's about 36 of them, is that this island is the closest island to the Maldives. And it's actually called the Lost Maldive Island. Because the people here, they follow Maldive culture more than they do the Indian culture on the other islands. So we are going to explore this incredible jewel in India's crown today. Chalo! So, you are many Khoi? Yes, I am And what languages do you speak? Mahal. On other islands, I speak Malay. Okay. I in many Khoi. I speak Mahal. Mahal is actually Maldives language. Maldives language you speak here, wow. We're just coming up to this incredible lighthouse now. We can actually climb this one. Wow, the view across this island is going to be incredible. This island is 11 kilometers long and the second largest island in Lakshadweep. And I can already see something painted here. It says Swatch Bharat. I love seeing that everywhere. And I've seen it so much here in Lakshadweep. It is so clean here. And yeah, there's no elevator. You're gonna have to walk. It must be a hundred or so steps. Whew. It's gonna be worth the view though, guys. That was an incredible view out there. And a lot of foreigners come here to Minikoi for surfing. As you can see those waves rolling down. Perfect, absolutely perfect. Now naturally the first thing we should do when we get to a tropical island is get in this incredible, incredible water, nah? Wow. Oh my god. Charlie, let's go in there, nah? So this is the largest lagoon in all of Lakshadweep. It is ginormous, it just goes as far as you can see, right? This is just one huge freaking lagoon for swimming. Oh my God. Out of all the islands, if you just want to come and lay on the beach, this is the one to do it in, Mini Koi. You've got the deck chairs, you've got the incredible water, you can do scuba, you can do kayaking, you can do snorkeling, surfing, everything is on mini koi, so it's probably the best island to come to for water sports. Our cruise ship is all the way out there. I don't know if you can see it or not. So, up Kahase, hey? Jamnaga, Gujarat, say. Acha, Kemcho. Saras, say. New Zealand, say. Acha, please come. Come to Auckland. Okay, so 11 out of 10 for the beach. If you love the beach, Mini Koi is absolutely the place for you. Even more so 
than the beaches in, in Andaman Islands because this is just pure, beautiful white sand. Love it. This is gonna be my kayak. Let's do it, bro. Here we go, guys. Oh, I'm gonna try not run over this uncle here. Let's see how far we can get out now. Okay guys, so when it comes to the differences between the Andaman Islands and Lakshadweep, Lakshadweep is gonna win hands down. There's less tourists here, the waters and the coral are way more pristine and untouched and unspoiled. Andaman is good and it's easy to get to, okay? And it, it's not a bad place, it's a great place actually. It's just Lakshadweep is just a tiny, tiny bit better, but obviously much, much harder to get to, right? I found the boss of Mini Koi, so let's talk to him and let's let's see what the differences are. What's the differences between Mini Koi and the other islands? The culture, right? The culture and the language. This village system is the biggest difference in compared to other islands. The village because system. We have that we're 11 village see. houses in this uh, Mini Koi, and which uh, will be owned by a head man and a head lady. So ah. the activities of the village, like marriages, will be functioning in the village premises, and that particular village people, which comes in that uh, house, comes in that village, yeah. will be gathered there, and they do all the functions, I mean, the making I mean, dinner for the marriage, everything commonly they do in that uh, village premises. Okay. And the expense will be made by the party who arrange it. It reminds it's me of, is that this like, um, you know Gandhi's visit, um, idea of village Swaraj? Yeah. These villages are living independently, independently without yes. much help from outside. No, no, it is uh, within the island. Their finance and everything coming within the village people only. Wow. It is organized by the common community whole life. Now you guys know I feel strongly about not selling you guys the brands. I don't do brand deals. But I'm going to show you inside this government accommodation so you can see what it is like when you come to stay at Lakshadweep in a government resort. Let's go check it out now. And this, of course, is not sponsored. And my videos never ever will be. This is the view from the balcony. Oh my goodness. And oh my god, check out inside as well. This place is 9,000 rupees per night for a couple. And for that price, that's around 200 American. Where else in the world can you get that view? The beach literally at your feet. And you know, this beautiful accommodation is very nice. It's, you know, it's at least four star standard here. And I've tried the food here in another video so you can see exactly what that is like as well. And then there's a second balcony right here and you're right in front of another lagoon and you can see the lighthouse from here. Awesome. Manu, you want to come stay here with me next time? One thing that surprised me about that accommodation is the quality of it. Usually these government of India resorts aren't that luxurious but they've done an amazing job here and it's surprising to see that there is no one staying in any of these bungalows or cottages they have here it's very very surprising and it goes with what somebody told me the other day people not many people are traveling here to Lakshadweep because it is a bit difficult to get to but you know for me I consider that a benefit Hey, let's get out of the resort now. Let's go and explore a local village and find out a bit more about their culture here on this incredible island, hey now? This is definitely the side of the island for surfing. The waves are awesome out there. We're driving all the way into the center of this island. We have left the beach road now. Gee, so what do people eat on the island? Fish, curry, rice, chapati. Chicken. Chicken. Sword? No, not sword. No sword? No, no pork. Yeah. Beef? 
Mutton beef. Mutton beef. Mutton beef, okay. I forgot, just like Hindus don't eat beef, Muslims don't eat pork. I forgot. I don't care. <laughs> Sorry. So right now we're driving to a local village here on Minikoi Island. What's the name of the village? Now we are going. Yeah. Yeah, Palisade. Palisade? Yeah, Palisade. I can't pronounce it. Sorry okay, guys. <laughs> it, can. it sounds like Palisade. Palisade, yeah. But it sounds like. We're going to check out what a Minikoi village is like and from what I can tell they are very self-reliant. Let's see if we can see that there, no? This boat you can see behind me. This is a mini koi tradition. They're only doing it here in mini koi. Every December they have a festival and it's a boat racing festival. So they race these boats all around the water there. These people are from the water and they literally live and eat from the water as well. So cool. We have something similar in New Zealand actually. The indigenous people, they have what's called a waka and very, very similar. They will ride on that as well. But the boats don't end here. They're also fishermen here. So they live and work on boats too, like this one behind me, which is being built. There are boats littered across this coastline. That's where they do their work, out on the ocean. Everybody's speaking Hindi here as well, which is surprising because they have their own languages here. They don't have to be speaking Hindi, but yeah, a lot of people here are speaking Hindi. And they're quite surprised by my Hindi, but yeah, it's really cool. It's really nice meeting these people. People are super friendly here, so do not be afraid to greet them with Assalamu Alaikum. And then you've made a friend for life with them. They're, they're so sweet. We're just having some traditional mini koi snacks now. They've got these veg samosas and this kind of sweet, which is like, like a sweet utapam kind of rolled and you would have noticed the women wear these these different kind of uh headdresses they wear it's called a dolly and it's white and yeah the design is just just totally different it actually reminds me of how a nun wears a dolly as well it's it looks very very similar so this is a delicious pancake mixed with kind of coconut it's exactly what it tastes like it's awesome and then it's not india without a samosa right Mm. Really good, really good. Homemade. What you can see here is kind of like a small village square. You've got a lot of green, a lot of blue, and just basically like wood and concrete used here. Let's go for a quick walk through this village. I'm breaking off from the group behind me. Hope they won't mind. See what we can find here. See how different it is to, you know, like a, a mainland. Indian village. Now this place is quite nice for a village, it's quite well developed. You've got basically concrete houses with kind of wooden doors, wooden windows. Some people have air conditioning here, it's not uncommon to see. Most people have like dish TV or Airtel TV, so they've got their satellite TV. You can get 4G internet here. A lot of these buildings are like two or three stories. Life doesn't seem too bad here and then over here you have like a traditional little dukan or a store, just like anywhere else. The kids are there operating the store. Just little gullies. It's quite a nice tropical island village. I'm gonna get lost. Most things here are written in... I don't even know what language that is. That's not Urdu. Well, it's a completely different language, a completely different script here. Crazy. But English or the other local language here. And we're coming to the end of the road here where we have a big, big, beautiful mosque. Wow. Awesome. We got a school right here. The kids are in recess. That's why they're so damn loud. 
We've got the mosque on the other side of the road right behind me. ATM and I think I found the kind of the main road here in Minikoi. We've got a bunch of shops down here leading out to the beach and then in a bank down there. Really, really simple village and, and simple living here. The kids at that school were all excited to see a foreigner because you don't get many foreigners here to be honest, especially not roaming around the streets here. On the other islands, some of them had never had someone from New Zealand there before. Some of the staff told me and they've been working there for 10 years. Really, really unexplored place. And actually the most unexplored place is Kavarati because people weren't allowed there or even on these islands for a long time. Foreigners weren't. But I've gone and explored that town in depth. It's a capital city, India's most unexplored capital city. Don't forget to check out that video too. Did you guys hear that? As soon as the call to prayer started, the people downstairs, the carpenters, they stopped their work. You gotta, you gotta keep it quiet and chill out for a few minutes while everybody goes and does their prayers here. It's a good time in the day to stop and just rest. Let's make our way back now, now. The group is probably wondering where I am if they're not already back on the cruise ship. And so they have these roads that line the beach as well. And this is where people come out to hang out at night. You have these shacks right here. You name them something like Black Store or, or whatever. And people come out here at night and they sit around on this kind of levitated stand and they'll just eat together or have ice creams or drink tea. Whatever the guys want to do at night, they'll come here, they'll sit around and they'll chill together. Like in Haryana, where the guys congregate around, you know, a deck of cards and a hooker. Except there's no alcohol here. It's totally banned, which is good. There is one island which you can drink it, and that's the island that, funnily enough, all the foreigners go to, so I guess it's unbanned there because of that. And here's just another example here. <laughs> Growing some little grass down here. And this one's called Hard Rock. Hey, this is, this is my beach shack, hard rock. This is me, so you'll come here, scoot to the back and just sit around and chill. These guys have got the life if you just want to chill and chill, fish and hang out. I'm sure that's a lot of people's from New Zealand's dream actually. A lot of men's dreams just to fish all day and chill all night. So next, I'm going back to the boat. And I just got to say, I feel so lucky to be here in the Minikoi Island. So lucky to be able to visit Lakshadweep and explore their culture and this, this incredible place which has been cut off from tourists for so long. This is Incredible India, Jay Hind. Ooh.